In this section, we'll take a look at the many options available when using driven dimensions in drawings. While driven dimensions can take more time to create than inserting dimensions from the 3D model, many users prefer them because their appearance and location can be controlled more precisely as they're created. Driven dimensions are created just like dimensions you would use to define a sketch. You simply click on the dimension icon and select the entities you wish to dimension. After I click on the segment, a manipulator appears which lets you create rapid dimensions. This manipulator is convenient because each dimension will be automatically positioned and spaced evenly apart. To create rapid dimensions, I hover by pointer over the circular manipulator to see a preview of the dimension. To move the dimension to the other side of the part, I can move my mouse to the side of the manipulator or press the tab key. However, if I move the cursor away from the manipulator, it disappears, and I can manually place the dimension anywhere on the drawing. I'll click on another line to dimension. To place the dimension, I can either click on the manipulator or press the space bar. I'll continue to add more dimensions, and you can see that the manipulator will space them evenly with the last dimension I placed. The manipulator is slightly different when dimensioning circles or by clicking on two points that are not horizontal or vertical to each other. If I dimension a circle, I have four choices for placing the dimension. If I click on two points that are not horizontal or vertical to each other, I'm also given four choices. The left and right options will dimension the vertical distance and the top and bottom will dimension the horizontal distance. However, if I wanted to dimension the angled face, I have to click on the line to get the overall dimension. Once these dimensions are in place, you can highlight them and move them or change the direction of their arrows. This works the same as with driving dimensions. I can even add tolerances and customize other aspects of the dimension if necessary right here in the Property Manager. I can also quickly change the tolerances and formatting of the dimensions by using a flyout window called the Dimension Palette. I can show the Dimension Palette by clicking on a dimension, and I can hover over it to show it completely. This is where I can adjust the tolerance, precision, and formatting. If I make changes using the Dimension Palette, the formatting is saved in the Styles or Star icon drop-down. I can select another dimension and apply the same formatting by clicking on the star icon, then select the format. You can see that by manually adding these dimensions, I control how this drawing will appear. If I were to insert dimensions directly from the 3D part, I would be giving up this control to SolidWorks, and I'd have to go back and clean up the imported dimensions. In addition to placing regular dimensions as I'm doing here, the Dimension tool gives me access to special types of driven dimensions. For instance, I can create ordinate dimensions, baseline dimensions, and others. Don't worry that driven dimensions show up as gray. This helps tell them apart from driving dimensions. If you wish to make sure they appear black when you print, set your printer settings to print in black and white.